Happy Vending. Hi, I'm Bill. Welcome to Happy Vending. And today I'm going to show you how to properly fill a drink machine. I have a Royal G3 660. This is a stack machine, meaning the drinks stack on top of each other when you put them in there. Now this has 12 columns on the inside to hold drinks, and most G3s do, regardless of how many selection buttons are on the front. They have 12 columns, and your more popular drinks you can program the whole two columns, three columns of drinks. Uh, six of those columns are in the back and six are in the front. You uh, really want to, when you're loading up your cart, load up the drinks that go in the back columns up on the top because you're going to need to get to them first. So you load the back columns first and then the, the drinks that will go in the front, you keep them at the bottom of your cart because you get to them and put them in the front. It just makes it a lot easier when you get to the machine that you don't have to take off drinks to get to the bottom ones that need to go in the rear in the rear columns. Now this machine is completely empty. It's in a high school. I had it turned off for the whole summer because we don't get a whole lot of traffic in here. So that's why I have uh, a lot of drinks in this cart. So uh, let's get at it. Here we go. Like I was saying before, you have 12 columns. Now these numbered one through six, these are the six front columns. And then behind them, you see this little black partition. Behind it would be the other six columns. And look up at the top, and you see the other numbers. And it goes all the way to 12. In order to determine what buttons on the front activate each column, you have to go into the space to sale settings on the machine. And I'll save that for another video. But I have this machine set up that this front column, column one, and the one behind it, which is column seven, are the waters in the machine. Selection one is water. So section, selection one does these two columns. When I load up water, I use these um, you know, consumer bottles. These aren't really Venn bottles. These are the 16.9 ounce Dasani's. Uh, since they're using less plastic on them, they're kind of they're kind of squishy, so you don't want to stack up too many of these on top of each other because they're going to lead to jams. So I won't really put more than one case in there. I put half of the case in the front column, the other half of the case in the back column. In order to completely load up this machine with water bottles, you would really need like a, a Ven water bottle, like a 20 ounce Dasani. The plastic's a lot more firm and they can handle the weight of each other but they're a lot more expensive and then you get less profit when you get those Venn bottles. So I get just these consumer ones. Another thing nice about these Royal machines is they have these little case support shelves. So you pull this out and then when you bring your product over, you can put it here and it says two cases of soda. That would be two 24 can cases you can put on here or one case of bottles. We're gonna load these first. Now bottles, and cans in these machines, when you're loading up the back column, which you should do first, the tops of the bottles go toward the back of the machine. So I just put that in there. I'm going to load up the back in half. And of course, this machine, the spacer is the back spacer back product stop is already set for these bottles so I don't have to really set any of that stuff. Same thing with the, the uh, rods that determine the size of the bottle. I have all, all set for this product. Usually when it gets up to this white spacer that's when it's half full. And then I'll put the other half of the case in the front column. Now when you're putting bottles in the front or cans in the front, the top of the bottle faces you. So in the front, they face you. In the back, they face the back of the machine. It's designed that way to limit jams. And when you're using bottles, you want to make sure you have these little plastic 
anti-friction pads on there on the sides because that stops bottles from bridging together. When a bottle's bridge, they, they sort of get stuck like this in the column and then they won't fall down. That helps. If yours are messed up or missing them, you can order them from any vending supply company. And you just uh, stick them on, they're like stickers. Just make sure you clean the surface with some alcohol or something. So there we go. Looks like there might be a little more in the back, so I'll take one of those and pop it in the front. And the way the machine bends, since both these two columns, seven and one, are linked to button one, it will bend this front column first, a bottle, and then it bends a bottle. Next time somebody buys a water, it bends from the rear. So it keeps these two equal. Unless one gets jammed, then it will start bending from the rear one. I might come in and find one of the columns full and the other one empty because one might have gotten a jam. Next, I have some Orange Crush. I have some Cherry Dr. Pepper. These are in the rear columns. You want to make sure that you're, you know, you're putting the right products in the right spot. I have this machine pretty well memorized, so I know where the stuff goes. Uh, some vendors write the products. Now, these product names were already written on there when I got this machine. Uh, I didn't change this. These aren't the products that are currently in there. You really got to know your machine or make little notes on the inside of it so you put the products in the right spot. But uh, I know this Cherry Dr. Pepper goes in this rear left column. That's one of the hardest columns to get to, so let's just knock that out now. Uh, I get the smaller 12 can packs instead of the full 24 case. Just rip this off, grab it once again, rear column, top of the can toward the rear. And these columns are set too, too deep for cans, meaning you can put two cans like this in there and it will alternate on the bend for them. So you put two next to each other, get them back in there. You gotta reach in. Well, and you have, when you have a machine that has columns in the back like this, you want to try to put your best sellers in the front and the slower sellers in the back columns because it is like if you had a rear column sell out and then the front column is still full, then you have to unload the front column to get to the rear column to fill it up. So you got to keep that in mind when you're planning out what drinks you want to put where in the machine. Now this is in a high school and most of these drinks sell pretty well. So at the end of the week, the machine will be pretty much empty on all the columns. Now when I set up my space to sales, I also do a custom setup. A lot of times by default on a machine like this, column one, two, and three will be tied together and you put your Coke in there and all those front three, three columns. But then it leaves a lot of other products and single columns in the rear. When I group them, I like to do these two grouped together, columns one and seven. They have the same product. Um, you don't need to get to a different product in the back and they bend equally. Same thing with the two and eight I have linked together same product and then these two I have linked together next one over is vanilla coke zero which are a good seller so three and nine are linked together so all these are linked together the only three columns that are hidden in the back that are covered by different product are columns 10 11 and 12. all right that's all of the dr pepper cherry I got take a look at that that's what it would look like. Pretty full, not full to the top, but that'll definitely last a week, a week and a half here. We're good on that. Next one over, one right to that is Orange Crush. Diet Orange Crush, of course, because it's a school, so let's get that one loaded up. You want to be careful when you're dropping your first ones in. Just don't put them in and let them drop down because these cans can split. And if the can splits, it makes a huge mess. It just explodes all over the machine. And then you're cleaning that soda out of there for about five minutes. It just it delays you. So you want to definitely carefully place those first low ones in when you have a completely empty machine like this. 
Now your Dixie Narco machines don't have hidden rear columns. They have just individual columns that go all the way back and you can put cans four deep in those. You can set it four deep, four cans in one column all in one row. But the Royals, the G3s, which are great machines, are just set up a little differently. As I was saying before, this is a Royal 669 G3 machine. And what those numbers mean, they do tell you something about the machine. 660 means it will hold 660 cans. If I had only cans in the machine in all the columns. The nine means it's a nine selection machine. You have nine selection buttons on the front. So you could have nine different products in here. Even though there's 12 columns, you only can have nine different drinks in this machine. And the G3 is just, uh, it tells you it's a Coke, a Coke machine. They make the G3 for Coca-Cola. The big um, difference from the G3 machines from the Merlin Royal machines is the G3s have one vent motor and a chain that vends all the products. There's a little, they call it dog, that goes around and knocks down the bottles. On the Merlin machines, just like the, the Dixie Narcos, you have a vent motor for each individual column that spins and that vends the product. The next column over is the Diet Barks. I wasn't sure if students were going to like root beer, but it, it is pretty popular here. And Barks does have caffeine. They do add caffeine to it, unlike the A&W root beer or the Mug root beer. It's caffeine free. And you know kids like their caffeine. Now, if you ever get a can that is damaged like this, don't put it in the machine because this is more likely to split open and it's not worth it. It's just going to make a huge mess of your machine. Sometimes if you just see somebody around asking if they want a free drink, they're usually happy to get something like this. Second damaged one. Somebody must have dropped this case. It's cutting into the profits. All right, you can stop. I'm not gonna show every drink. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the Cherry Coke Zero. Now this one is one that is in the rear column and the column in front of it. So I sort of alternate. The rear ones go front toward the rear. I alternate. I put a couple in the front and the rear, and then I put a couple in the front. When you put cans in the front columns, the tops come toward you, just like the bottles. That way you evenly distribute a case, say with an older date, evenly distribute it uh, with the rear column and the front column. Because remember, when you have two columns linked together for one selection, the machine is going to alternate when it vents. It's going to vent one from the rear, one from the front, one from the rear, one from the front. So you want those older ones in both columns so it vents them both equally. All right, so um, I filled up the two columns of the Cherry Zero. Now I'm gonna do the Vanilla Zero, which is also a very good seller. It's configured just like this is, the rear and the front. This is my selection one on the machine. Selection two is Cherry Zero. Selection three is Vanilla Zero, both columns. Then it comes to number four, which is just Coke Zero which doesn't sell quite as well as the flavored ones. And then five is Dr. Pepper Diet, and then six is Mountain Dew Diet. Then it bends these columns starting at 10, which is the root beer, and then the crush, and then over there in the corner, the cherry Dr. Pepper, of course, diet. 
and that is a very good seller as well. All right, that's done. Let's hit the Coke Zero. Coke Zero s sells okay, but not real great. So I only have one column for that. It is in the front. Like I was saying, I probably should put it in one of the hidden rear columns because you can go a while without having to refill this. I only, am, I only brought two cases of this Coke Zero for now. Next I have the Dr. Pepper Diet, which I discovered does not sell as well as the Cherry Dr. Pepper Diet. So maybe eventually I'll switch the location of the two, which really isn't hard to do. You just have to switch out the VIN labels in the front of the machine. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any Diet Mountain Dew with me right now to fill up this final column, but that's what would go there. I'm gonna have to pick up some later today and fill up that column. But this is what a machine should look like that's properly loaded. Your uh, front column cans facing toward you, the rear column cans you see in the back facing toward the back of the machine. If you have the squishy bottles, don't fill it up too high. When you're done, push in your shelf, close up your door, and then tighten up the key handle. You want to make it snug that you don't have any play in the door so you have a good seal there. Like so. Push, push it in the lock. All right, that's all. Hope you learned how to fill a vending machine. As always, happy vending.